Opening day of the new year, welcome to the Lathwaite Community Stadium for Woking against Aldershot Town in part two of Derby Day. The card struck first on Boxing Day with a famous win at the EBB, courtesy of a Reese Brown penalty against his old side and a disastrous own goal from Corey Jordan. In the Effiong, the former Woking striker half the deficit close to home from the spot, but it was Darren Seld's cards that played the perfect hand in a 2-1 victory. That, however, only half the story with today's contest looming large. This has a lot more going for it. It's a uh, very nervy derby we're looking forward to. The game is underway. Woking playing from right to left as myself, Ian and Rob look. All a shot left to right. They're shooting towards the Leslie Gosson stand, the visitors. Woking towards the packed Kingfield Road end. James Daly with his first touch in the game. Marching down the left-hand side, chased by Vincent. It's number eight on number eight. Clipped into the penalty area. Looking for Kellerman. A mond on the turn as Luca Ashby Hammond sees that out for the first goal kick. Delighted to say we can bring in Rob Worrell as well. Rob, initial thoughts on this one? Yeah, well, it's all, uh, my main initial thoughts are that Aldershot are playing four at the back. So Davies at right back, Harfield at left oh, now back. With Vincent over on that far side. Now with Glover. Glover the wrong side of Rowan Ince. Infield looking for Effie on snatch stopping by Kellerman. Thanks very much indeed, Chris. As Ince gets it away, header by Amond. It's two on two if we can right. get this right. <laughs> with Amond now looking for Brown. Brown is there, left foot in over the keeper! And off the post and in! Two minutes played! Woken are in front! It's Reese Brown again! 1 2 with Patrick Amond. Cut apart the order shot town defence. And Woking lead by a goal to nil. Ian Nicholson. Well, it's been a frenetic start to the game, both ends. Uh, the speed merchants at both ends, but that was a great break and a lovely ball in. And Reese Brown has been a revelation since he came to Woking, just getting that little chip over the keeper. Very delicate, hit the post, and then very slowly went into the goal. Great start for, for Woking and uh, an electric start to the game. And sadly, not the start that Aldershot Town would have wanted, Rob. No, I don't think they penetrated well enough going forward and uh, Glover's eventual pass into Effiong wasn't good enough. Woking turned over the possession. A little bit of space on the right. Beautifully uh, lifted in ball to the middle and it was really difficult for Brown. And I must admit, 90% of his effort, I thought that's just going to roll by the post, but it hit the inside of the post and went in. Straight to Joe McNerney, who had a good game at the EBB, finds a good pass to Amon, first time header looking for Brown now, set his sights on goal, low drive, just snatched at the effort, but he did get a touch off an all shot town leg on its way through, Woking have their first corner of the game. It's that 4-4-2 that Rob was referring to, was it a three or was it a four? Here's Frank Vincent now, galloping forward in the centre of the pitch, seeking out support with Glover. Opening up his body, Kellerman comes flying in, Glover still has it. Now with Amaluza, dragging away from Casey, shaping for the shot. Wonderful challenge from McNerney. But yeah, all the shots, best moment of the game there, they built up well there. Brighten up the pitch. Towards the back post, looking for Phillips and indeed Cordner. Neither could get there, but a good chance, Rob. Yeah, there's another chance. You've got two players both just short of it, whereas if one's gone and one stayed, then you've got a better chance. Uh, frustrating for all the shots. Richardson today, who was in charge for one Woking game earlier on this season. That was the 1-1 draw against Southend. Did hand out nine yellow cards that day. Most of any game he has matched this season. Daly now bursting forward between all the shot defenders. Was he clipped by Phillips? Yes, just outside the area, though. And it will be the first yellow card of the afternoon. And it will go in the direction of Giles Phillips, Ian Nicholson. Yeah, good to see James Daly getting a good run at the defence there. He's been a bit quiet, and I think, you know, he was out injured a little bit, and he's been... A bit Nerny appealing to the referee that the wall isn't far enough back. They're creeping forward. But Amond has his sights set on the ball, around the wall. And uh, I think it was Phillips there to nod it clear, gave away the free kick, dealt with it, but at the expense of a working corner. Uh, the D... Everybody and, back for all the shot. Everybody. Yeah. O'Connell. Oh, it's just too short. Amaluza was there. Amond has picked it up though. Amond lofted in to Int straight at the goalkeeper. Great opportunity for working to double their lead, but all the shot are away at the other end. Galloping forward is Davis looking for Effion. Kellerman is there, and McNerney will see it out for an all the shot town throw. Well, great, great little ball in there and. Uh, it was Ince who had a great chance and just... There. And then Glover headed back forward. Now with Klass again. 
Looking for Amaluza, shaking off and shrugging off the challenge of Kellerman. Amaluza outside of the boot, looking for Tyler Cordner. Amaluza rolls kindly back to Greg Ross, but Amaluza is the one that's causing class infield ball to find Partington. Nice triangle football from the visitors. Davis now finding Vincent shouldered onto Glover. Low ball, looking for Amaluza. Got the ball a little bit stuck, gets the strike away, and it's high and wide. It is the closest all shot town of come, and just a reminder that Amaluza can cause the problems in the Woking defence. Yeah, best chance all shot I've had. Amaluza did well. As Rob was saying, they need to be clinical with those chances, and he he, he did well, but it was uh, it was clearly over. Uh, but it's uh, he's been Casey, just a couple of yards away from his manager Darren Sell, manager and captain, on the same wavelength down the line, looking for a Mond headed clear. Class straight to Kellerman, who has ints on the overlap, locates Reese Brown instead oh. went for the Treston strike. And uh, Ashby Hammond it was a little bit awkward for him, will get away with it with the goal kick and a bit of afters with the crowd as well. Just had to be aware of where his net actually was. Another woken for a couple of other goals that have just gone in. Chesterfield have equalised against Scunthorpe, 1 1 there, and also Halifax Town nil, Altrium 1. Casey crossed into the area, oh. Kellerman was arriving, he threw himself at it. And it's rolling out of play comfortably for a goal kick, which they take quickly all the shot. And Amaluza wasn't really anticipating it, although he is there. It's bounced off the back of Ross. Amaluza, it's a bit awkward for him, needs a bit of support as Ross rushes back to his goal. Here's Inie F. Young turning back onto his right boots, looking for Klass on the edge of the penalty area. Klass looking to go right to Glover. It gets there in the end, but Woken are getting numbers back now. Glover, low ball straight into Craig Ross, Vincent arriving just too late, Rob Worrell. It was a good ball actually from Glover, it's gone through to the keeper, but any forward taking a gamble on that has a tap in um, for, for, from Effiong and from Klaas. Who can clear the Woking lines, and go down the right passage now, and cleaned up by Partington. And away by Cordner. Here's Amaluza now on the turn. Lovely ball down through the lines to Inny Effiong, who's driving forward now up against Charlie O'Connell. Switches back to his right boot. Effiong still going! And equalises! Inny Effiong, he just had to score! Scorer on Boxing Day! Scorer on New Year's Day! And Inny Effiong has equalised for Aldershot Town against his former side. Five minutes to go until half time. Woking one. Aldershot Town won, Rob Worrell. When he picked the ball up in the left-hand side of the penalty area, I thought, yeah, I'll drag it back now, I'll try and make room for a shot. Quite often when he does that, it's a bit slow, it's a bit cumbersome, but he judged it perfectly. He drilled his shot low, and the shots having quietened the crowd and stayed in the game have got themselves level four minutes before, before half-time. Casey has another opportunity with this throw, locates Anderson in a bit of space, feeds it back to Casey, now with Brown who's on side, Brown turning away from Davis, Brown still going, can he get the strike on goal? Just wide, uh, wide and high rather, a bit of both, but again as Rob mentioned a few moments ago, a man with plenty of confidence at the minute, shaping for the shot, we've got six oh, yeah, minutes. He was touted as a, a very good player in League One, I think began at Arsenal a long time ago. So Casey's resulting free kick is cleared away by Effiong, only to the head of Ince. Effiong's wrestling with McNerney now, arriving is Kellerman. Hasn't cleared it though. Kellerman, was he caught? Penalty! <laughs> Kellerman was caught just a yard inside the penalty area, not too sure who by. There was a real cloud of players in the way. But Woking on the brink of half time have a chance to go back in front from the spot. And you can guess who has grabbed the ball straight away. Rhys Brown, who converted from the spot on Boxing Day, has another chance to beat Luca Ashby Hammond on the brink from of all the shot players. It was yeah. a, it was a bit of a, he was caught obviously. And here we go with Rhys Brown. Rhys Brown up against Ashby Hammond. Rhys Brown sends him the wrong way. Woken are back in front on the edge of half time. They've been lacking that killing edge ever since Aldershot equalised. They restore their lead, it's two goals to one. Rhys Brown, once again amongst the goals, two for him today, two for Woken. They lead by two goals to one. Superbly take a penalty. I have to say, if this is the score going into half-time, it probably is a little bit harsh on all the shots, yeah. because I think I think a, a draw would have been perfectly set up. But Out at it. Corner can clean up 
and uh, spreads the play out to the right side of which Glover will not give this up and keep this in play it's an uh, ambitious ball into the box no yellow shirts there Amaluza on the edge of the penalty area left footed curling effort is beyond the goal and indeed Craig Ross and will be a goal kick in this break in play you know working a little bit messy there really not clearing their lines particularly well Mond and Daly going for the same ball and Daly's done really well to locate Amon now Amon charging forward into the Aldershot Town box Amon with his back to goal looking for support first time ball from Daly is a good one looking for Kellerman <laughs> Woking are 3-1 up now and it's Jim Kellerman a former shot who puts them in front up to 3-1 now Jim Kellerman has got the goal his second of the season Wonderful play from Amond and Daly over on that far side. And Kellerman met the Daly cross, tucked it beyond Ashby Hammond, and all of Aldershot's good work has gone amiss. Woking 2 1 up on half time, now 3 1 up in. Yeah, Jim Kellerman's been immense all afternoon, and it's been that whole thing of your ex players come back to haunt you. In the Effiong did that for work to Woking, and now Jim Kellerman has done it to uh, break Aldershot hearts, really. And, uh, that gives a slight buffer to Woking to be 3 1, but it, and it will settle nerves a little bit. Uh, uh, what do you say? Um, Kellerman, his passing in the two games has been atrocious, but his spirit has been incredible. And he right now is the difference in both games because he just won't go away. He's a pest for you, against you. And oh, the keeper's lost out oh, here, and the keeper's lost it to Amont, who has an empty goal to tuck it in! And Amont's made it four! Shocking goalkeeping from Luca Ashby Hammond straight from the kickoff! And in a matter of seconds, this game is dead and buried! Woking three, Aldershot one, and then a few seconds later, Woking four! Aldershot one, it's Patrick Amont who's got himself on the score sheet! It's his fifth what? goal of the season! I mean, and what calamitous defending in! What was Ashby Hammond doing? It's, a, it's like, I mean, he's a young goalkeeper, so they're often taught to bring the ball out and play it around. But you don't do that with a... I mean, Pottering on just nipped in, took the ball off him and ran through on goal. It was... Well, that was... Ridiculous. Bizarre, bizarre. And what, is, what was a very tight game and a hard-fought game in a matter of a minute has been turned on its head. One with a very good goal and one with atrocious defending. Rob, I mean, what do I you say? Well, I didn't see how the build-up, because I was facing you and, <laughs> and just commented on the previous goal. Um, all I can tell you, those in red and blue will feel like I do. Stunned and sick. He's on loan from Fulham, learning his trade. He's played all in the youth system at Fulham, under 18s, 23s. His season at Aldershot, you'd hate to think will be remembered by that mistake. It's a low drive from Vincent straight at Craig Ross and it's all woking now Ian yeah good work there from Vincent to make to make that opportunity it's woefully short and even game suddenly Solihull had their heads up and went on to win and uh, he said he'd never done a mistake like that in his career and, uh, and here's sure Brown. Hammond won't do it again here's Reese Brown trickling his way through again Reese Brown looking for support with a Mond goes back to Anderson who loses out but wins it back after a lovely turn there from Anderson on his opposite number. And Woken starting to celebrate in style here with Ince's shot! Oh, and it's off the post! Just wide from Rowan Ince. They are dancing their way through the bat line of the shots now, who just simply need to regroup. They certainly do. Um, where do you go from 4-1 down with 34 minutes to go? I mean, yeah, technically there's time, but... Pressure here. Glover onto class now Amaluza with a bit of space and time to turn last of the shot nearly out of the stadium let's go to Eastley Eastley Dawkins Chris Baldwin the Mark has been getting clearance by Ross thanks very much indeed Chris sorry Rob to interrupt you yeah sorry let Rope working on the attack Brown who's shaping for the shot and a couple of opportunities to to give it a whack and sort of was put off with it really with Red and white shirts flooding forward. In the end, it's safely over the crossbar. Goal kick, Rob. Yeah, Amaluza had a... One hand in the air from O'Connell. It's towards the near post. Picked on by Amon. It's gone through everybody, and the keeper eventually gets two hands to it. McNerney was just inches away. That could have easily have been five. But the goalkeeper makes amends, at least for a little bit, for his error. Good. 
Lamond, who struggled at the start of season, start of the season, four goals. Mom. As Paniato hits one from range, and he just got the feeling that Craig Ross wasn't always comfortable there. Okay, it's Kellerman in a bit of space, because O'Connell was already racing away, and Darren Self throws the bottle at the floor in frustration. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? It's going really bad, Darren. <laughs> it's finding a Mond. O'Connell on the overlap, and here he is, the Peter Loney. We had a tough first half. Amond into Kellerman, lovely flick back to Wokin's most recent goal scorer, and he sort of stuck out a toe, if you like, a real punt, and it was just wide. Goal kick. He's been immense Sorry. today, Jim Kellerman. Casey's corner, right towards the back post. There's a player down, it's Cuthbert. The header from McNerney was over anyway, so goal kick given. Not too many other games have had recent goals in. I guess he's pulled out to the left touch line. Has got Harfield on the overlap. Effiong in field, just too strong for Klasser. Simple ball as uh, Kellerman's gone down off the ball. Play still goes on now with Vincent onto Harfield. Low ball into the box, looking for Effiong, just bounces off his shin. And straight through to Craig Ross now. Kellerman will be able to get. Finds Cordner. Bruce Brown challenging. In for the ball, Cordner finds Glover who slips, stolen off him by Casey. And Casey, with two yellow shirts in front of him, has somehow trickled it through to Anderson. Poor touch went flying in there, and Anderson could that be in a be spot a of bother. That might it be is, a red. it's a red card. Two of the last three games between Woking and Aldershot have seen red, and Anderson is off for an out of control tackle on the Aldershot midfielder. Couldn't see who, it might have been Vincent. But uh, the one blemish on the afternoon, if there was to be no more, we're well, going to see Elva Fontaine for all the shot very shortly. Marcel Elva Fontaine, as the corner is whipped in, right underneath the goalkeeper, it falls to Amond, left footed strike! Oh, and it's just wide. There was a nick through from an all shot town defender, so it will be another corner, but Amond hit that with some real venom there. Yeah, it does. Paniatu. And the referee's hit his average of six cards per game, but it's his first red he's shown. <laughs> Here's Effiong. Yellow shirts flocking to his right. Effiong still going. Met with O'Connell, who's half the height and size of any Effiong. We know the battering ram that he can be. As one inside a, a throw, which Paniatu is on to. Amond won the ball as Paniatu scrambles to get to his feet. Loftus puts it out of play. Yeah. Dominating the game. Yeah, now absolutely. And, and asking the question and nicking one back and making things interesting, but they don't even look like scoring. That's telling it like it is, I'm afraid. Lofthouse finds Ince, Daly shaping for the shot, looking for the, the curling effort towards the far post. Just didn't really have the bend that he wanted. They've got a free kick here, of which they have nine yellow shirts in the box. Curled in, though, looking for Phillips off the crossbar. Not too sure if Ross got a touch. Here's Effiong finding his left foot, slices the effort. He's still going, meanwhile. And Glover goes all the way back out. To Davis floating a ball towards the back post beyond Effiong. Harfield is there though. Low drive across the face of goal and Glover puts it wide. Off the crossbar. Good opportunity. Yeah, very good opportunity. You know, all the shots. Best opportunity in the second half, really. And uh, as Rob said, too little, too late. And, uh... Sloan. and guess who's there? Joe McNerney. Alpha once more. Shrugging off Casey. Still going, Alpha. Needs a bit of support. Left footed drive, hits the side netting. And uh, not too sure what the. It was a good ball, actually, from Glover yeah, to give him credit. There it is. The full time whistle was blown. Derby Day belongs to Woking for once. Boxing Day win. New Year's Day win. They've done the, the double over Order Shot Town for just the second time in the 21st century against Aldershot. 4-1 they've won here. Two goals from Reese Brown. Jim Kellerman's header. A shocking goalkeeping error from Luca Ashby Hammond, of which Amon tapped into an empty net. Four goals for Woking. Ine Effiong made things interesting at 1-0. Five minutes from half-time. But the day belongs to Darren Searle. The day belongs to Woking and the red and white cards. The supporters will enjoy this for a long time. The Aldershot Town fans head for the exits. Another day for them. On a day that usually belongs to Aldershot, it's Woking's turn. They've won here by four goals to one.